Hi everyone, in uh, today's video I will take up a very important topic and uh, this topic is how to explain the low R square value if you get any. Alright, so you can see here that I have provided an example of uh, a low R square value. I'll go more into it but uh, just to show you something. So you've got this R square here and the adjusted R square here. So this is the adjusted R square value that I will be talking about. So I'll just zoom it in for you guys here. So I carried out a regression analysis in my research where I was trying to establish a correlation between two variables. So the correlation was between uh, C, uh, students' perception of authenticity uh, in assessments and uh, authenticity with transparency of criteria. This was one variable. And the second variable was their scores in authentic assessment or in assessment. So if you're not familiar with these terms, that's fine. Just remember that I was trying to establish the correlation between two variables. Now you will see that this R square value is only 8.7%. Um, so 0 0.0875 or that is a 0.8.8%. And uh, I have highlighted it in my research that this is based on a relatively low value of the adjusted R square. Now you can see that I have used the term relatively low value, not low value because uh, um, when you say low value uh, and high value it is relative to something how can we define low or high unless of course it's absolutely zero now why i'm going to show you this is because it was very important because in my research it came out uh, that i have got a low r square value and uh, sometimes some people will say that the r square value should be large enough to explain the strength of your model and if not this means that the explanatory variables do not explain any change in the dependent variables so if because this is a low r square value this would have meant that uh, students perception of authenticity in, in transparency or transparency of criteria assessment criteria which is my uh, independent variable does not explain the change in the scores which is my dependent variable right so then that diminishes my value of research that would be one school of thought uh, now if you think about it or not think about it uh, ideally this is not the case so it depends on your research question and the way you test your model so a lot of people will say that higher r square is better and of course it is better it, it shows the strength of relationship um, but what should you do if you get a low r square value does that mean that your research is no uh, no good uh, sometimes people say that low R square values are a matter of concern in longitudinal studies only. So if you are using cross-sectional data, go for the significance. I'll explain what that means also. So what happened with me was that this was uh, one test that I carried out and then uh, and then I carried out another model testing and another testing and I got similar results. So if I can zoom in here, I'll show you that again I carried out um, uh, a regression analysis and uh, I again got a low R square value adjusted R square was only 10.4 percent here right and this was with two factors so one of the factor and again I don't want to go into details of it one of the factors was again again the same one as the previous one but again um, I got a low adjusted R square value and here I was puzzled I didn't know what to do and how to explain it so in general, R square measures the accuracy of the regression model or the percentage of explained variations represented by the explanatory variables out of all variations. If it is very small, this means that the explanatory variables should be replaced by another variable. Right. And these are the popular opinions. So the lower R square graphs uh, will, you know, sometimes show variable variability in data. Um, so remember before I go into the explanation um, R square can sometimes be increased by including more predictor variables in your regression model so what does that mean is that if I'm getting a low R square value this means that these factors may not be the factors that explain the relationship between the two variables maybe I missed out on certain factors and I should have included them so if you include more factors 
or more variables to explain your dependent variable or change in dependent variable, you might get an increased R square value. So that is one way of getting a higher R square value. All right. But I will tell you what to do if there is a low R square value, how, what to, how to address it. So remember, you have to understand that the R square is a measure of the explanatory power. It is not a fit. So you can generate lots of data with a low R square because we don't expect models, especially in social or behavioral sciences, to include all the relevant predictors to explain an outcome variable. Sometimes you will miss out on variables. So there are many people who have written um, stuff on this, like Nater and Wesserman. Um, so you should note that R square, even when small, can be significantly different from zero. It is more than zero, right? Indicating that your regression model has statistically significant explanatory power. So although here the, the R square value is low, that doesn't mean there is no relationship between the two variables. And this is how I explained the low R square value. What I wanted to establish was, is there a relationship between the two variables or not the strength of relationship. I never claimed that factor two or factor five is the only um, uh, independent variable that will cause a change in the dependent variable. No, I didn't say that. I just wanted to find out if there was a relationship between factor two and factor five with the scores in the authentic assessment or scores in the assessment. I just wanted to establish a relationship. So even though here the R square value is low, there is still a relationship. So you should always report the value of R square as an effect size because people might question the practical significance of the value. People here might say that, um, you know, because your R square is low, that means that, you know, factor two and factor five are not the only two factors. Yes, that's fine. Um, I don't claim that they are the only two factors that can cause change. Uh, I'm saying these are the two factors uh, that have some relationship with the variable. So they can also cause a change in the dependent variable or the scores in this case. So in some fields, R square is typically higher because it is easier to specify complete, well-specified models. But in social sciences, which was my area of research, it is hard to specify such models. You can miss out on certain variables. So I was trying to list the variables. Um, I was trying to list all the variables which will cause a change in the scores of the students. Scores in assessment. So I, I listed transparency in criteria, uh, authenticity of the task, how, how authentic is the task to what they do at the workplace. Um, then uh, there were other things as well. So I don't want to go into it, otherwise I'm going a bit off topic. So I was trying, I listed, let's say four or five factors. And I said, you know, um, one or two of them will definitely cause a change in the scores of the students. So out of that, I found that only two factors had some kind of relationship with the scores. That was factor two and factor five, right? So, but I didn't say that these are the only two. I might have missed a couple of the factors. So here, even though relationship, the adjusted R square value is low, it still establishes a relationship. So how did I explain it? So let me show you how I explained it. So you can see here how I have explained the low value of adjusted R square because you have to acknowledge it. You have to explain it to your readers. Otherwise, uh, your reviewers uh, will definitely uh, come up with some questions. Your examiners might come up with some questions. So here I have written that the findings of the regression analysis presented in this paper are based on a relatively low value. So see, I have used the word relatively again because you cannot say it's low. It's relatively low. All right. So it's 8.8 .8 in stage one and 10.4 in stage two. Now the adjusted R square value focuses on explaining the observed variation in the dependent variable due to the independent variable. Now this implied that the significant factor of transparency of criteria, although important, did not explain the majority of the variance in the student score. So it did not explain the majority of the variance, right? Similar was factor one. Hence, it was a possibility that the correlation and regression model adopted in this paper may not have included important factors of assessment before measuring the independent variable of perception of authenticity, right? So, however, Although they may not have included all the important factors, that doesn't mean that these two factors are not important. So these two factors also have some relationship. And that is why you have to, that is how you explain it, that although you got a relatively low adjusted value of adjusted R square, you have to find or you have to see what is your research question. You have to see what was the objective of carrying out the regression analysis. If it was to explain the strength of the relationship 
between two variables then definitely you need a high r square value but it was only if to if it was only to establish a relationship between the two variables then adjusted r square is fine but uh, talk to your uh, supervisors as well and find out what do you mean by a low value and what is a high value in your field of study so your field of study it might be a bit different but i thought i should discuss this because this was where i got a bit concerned in my research as well and i was thinking that you know the popular value is that it should always be a high value uh, what if examiners ask me question or reviewers ask me question how can i explain it and then i i did study upon it and i found out that no this is nothing like that you can still explain it you can still justify it if you can acknowledge it and you can highlight it yourself before the examiners come back to you so guys uh, let me know what you thought about this video and uh, if you have any further questions queries or concerns i'm happy to answer it i try to make these videos using simple language and not academic language so that it's helpful for you to understand uh, but i look forward to your comments and feedback